This is another challenging chapter that attempts to continue the on-the-run aesthetic of the prior chapters. However, in my opinion it falls flat, because the sense of urgency, which should be heightened due to the jailbreak context from the story, is instead undercut by the chapter's plotting pace. The chapter feels like a logjam, due to a combination of enemy density, terrain, and narrow choke points that not only restrict movement, but also increase effective enemy durability by reducing the number of attacks the player can make. There are two paths from the starting location to the exit in this chapter. The left path has more enemies, but for the most part also has clearer terrain and more room to maneuver. Things come to a screeching halt, however, upon reaching the main choke point, where two armor knights block the way behind a clump of movement-inhibiting thickets. The right path has its choke point up front, in the form of a door that Soth can open, with a smaller clump of thickets immediately beyond it. There are fewer enemies blocking the way, but most of the Dawn Brigade starts to the left of a large clump of thickets that they need to cross to even reach the door. While the right side is probably the faster side, the player is encouraged to go to the left because the path appears clearer for the most part, and because, as I've mentioned before, most players prefer to engage in more combat, which the left side offers. Moreover, players familiar with the chapter know that Aaron shows up on the left side. While it may be possible to recruit him while taking the right side path, it's certainly more straightforward to do so from the left side. As such, while I haven't actually tried sending my entire party to the right side in this chapter, I feel comfortable saying that this chapter moves too slowly. Even if taking the right path makes things feel lightning fast, that doesn't help much when everything about the design draws the player's attention to the left. That's not to say this chapter is awful. For one thing, the yellow units are great. Not only is it fun to have another new bonus objective, but they're durable enough that they can take a hit or two, or more in Kurth's case, which means they can be used tactically, and that's even more fun. It's unfortunate that it's so easy to forget to command them, but that's a systems or UI issue, not a level design issue. And one thing the slow pace of the chapter does is mitigate this problem, since the yellow units won't fall behind quickly. Also, heading to the left does give the player a good opportunity to use the Thani Tome, if they didn't already use it against the boss of the previous chapter. In addition to the boss, who is mounted, there are several armor knights to the left side, including the two guarding the choke point and this is Micaiah's first chance to really shine in combat as a result. Also, on hard mode at least, several of the enemies only get one hit KO'd by Micaiah if she's in support range of Soth, which is a nice touch. Overall, while this chapter is slow, it is definitely not boring, nor is it repetitive with other chapters throughout the game, and it maintains the challenge offered by the previous couple of chapters. There's still more going on in this chapter than most Fire Emblem games offer in most of their chapters, and while it doesn't execute as well on its ideas as the previous chapters do, I appreciate the continued effort to keep things varied and interesting. <laughs>